All right, so before we get uh, finished with the cabin project and, and annotate those construction documents, I want to take a moment to show you this project that's on the cover of my book, The SketchUp Workflow for Architecture. And this model and the construction documents that the model are attached to are totally free, available for download at sketchupexchange.com. Uh, once you get in there, you go to, um, it's basically sketchupexchange.com forward slash TSWFA, the SketchUp Workflow for Architecture. So uh, go sign up for the forum, check that out, and you can grab this model, which is completely organized. All of the scenes are all set up. Uh, it's got all the styles attached. All the layers are, are properly organized. So you can really see how like level one uh, to unit A, B, C. So you can see how all this stuff starts to come together and the way that this system, it's scalable, uh, it can be applied to very complex projects, and it really allows you to pick apart a model any way that you need to. So uh, this, this model, as well as this entire layout presentation, and here you can see a bunch of notes, and it's not totally complete, but it's really close. There's a site plan. Probably the most valuable thing is, is the, are, are the uh, floor plans and how all that's set up, the way that I, I organize the stairs and use section cuts to create that. Uh, you can see how the annotations and the tags and um, just the way the entire set is put together. It's really, I've always found it helpful that if somebody's going to teach you, that's one thing, and our classes are definitely very helpful with that, and our online consulting, um, our private and public trainings. But it's another thing when you can actually take a project and open it and just pick through it and just destroy it and check it out and see what uh, how, how it's put together. So uh, then we've got our, our enlarged elevation. we got black and white elevations, color elevations, and uh, sections, and a couple blow-ups here. So... Um, definitely a lot to take in there, and um, I'm not going to save that. So uh, sketchupexchange.com, uh, the link should be posted there. Go check that out. And uh, also you can get started immediately by taking SketchUp 101. So it's a free three-hour online course uh, that is available at sketchupexchange.com. All right, so now here we are in our cabin plan, uh, cabin project. And um, so... You know, one thing I, I typically do is I'll use a line and um, our viewports are locked and our title block is locked. So I would just typically draw a line and use my shape style to beef that line up. So um, usually two is okay. Maybe I could set it to be more like a three uh, thickness and stretch that out. And then I can hold down control and just copy that down here. So we've got our our ground plane set up just like that and then uh, let's see we also have these things called scrapbooks so this entire scrapbook is available for download at sketchupexchange.com and furthermore in my book the sketchup workflow for architecture I explain how to create a lot of these scrapbooks so these are really slick little pieces of uh, pre-built annotation uh, and you just click on them in your scrapbook uh, inspector and then you just drop them in your your model so um, really easy way to to keep all of your schedules all your symbols all organized all right so we'll go back to the beginning there and all right so there's our elevation that's set up and then uh, you can imagine we'd throw some notes on the cover page we're not gonna mess with that just right now but the biggest thing is adding uh, adding dimensions and 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 plan call outs and things like that so uh, let's see we'll go to our dimension tool and if I just start out I'm just gonna go and, and throw a dimension on here so you can see that this is actually saying one uh, one in 11 64 inches what I like to do is when when I activate my dimension tool or when I select this dimension I can see its properties here and what I really wanted to do is I find that auto scale is just not where it's at I like to say uh, do this manually so we're going to say quarter inch scale architectural and our precision is 1 64th so all that looks looks fine I suppose it's a little bit heavy and clunky alright so that's how we can adjust you know we have some options for our dimensions but here's what I do in my scrapbook I have set up eighth, in, eighth inch and quarter inch dimensions so if I activate my dimension tool I can just hover and click 
and then I can absorb the property. So my, my scrapbook is also serving as a palette. So I can now go like to my center lines, uh, that makes it pretty easy, and to the outside dimension, or you can, you can dimension to openings. We can change these so that they sit on the other side, uh, whatever makes sense. Uh, you have full control over your dimension. So then, uh, let's see, we actually want these to sit out a little bit further. So we'll just use our grip points there. Go back to dimensioning. So um, whatever, uh, however you like to dimension, uh, you, you are totally free to do all of that with layout. It's uh, definitely a very flexible program. And it's very simple. It's, it's uh, deceptively simple. The, the tool set is so... Uh, slim down, but a lot of these, a lot of these tools have a lot of buried features. So uh, let's see, we we could call out. I don't know if I have room tags at all. Uh, we could do this and throw in our interior elevations. So you can imagine how fast that goes. And then we can tag our windows. We could say like a. So uh, one downfall of this entire system or using SketchUp and Layout is we do have some limited um, scheduling and I, I think I mentioned the parametric modeling and so you do have to go through here and change this to B or I guess a, a B and C and so you if you add a window you got to be aware of, of what you're doing and and the fact that you're disrupting the, the whole order so um, it is like 2D CAD in that sense, or hand drafting even, because you, there's no connectivity um, between the schedules and the tags and the actual windows. But really, that's a, that's a small hurdle to get over. Uh, we can tag our doors with a, a different symbol. And uh, then, uh, let's see, what else do we have? Uh, we have a door schedule. We don't really need that right now. We, we could call out like... Um, our our bathroom area so you you can create these pre-built pieces so we could maybe do an enlarged plan of our bathroom um, very easy to edit all of this stuff uh, so we can just kind of grab all this and scoot it over here and then we're gonna flip this right in the middle it's a minus one uh, and that's okay we'll just go like this Scoot it over there. And this could probably be its own group. That'd be fine. And now that little piece of annotation sticks to that line so we get it out of the way. All right, so you can see how it's very easy with scrapbooks to, um, to add a bunch of, of annotation. So uh, one tip, though, when you, when you get to this point where you're ready to start annotating, it's uh, if I make a change, I move a window, these dimensions are not stuck to that window. So again, there are some... some uh, conveniences that are not included but the price is right uh, the fact that you're you're designing you're thinking in 3d and you're you're drafting and explaining in 2d and the way that all that works extremely affordable extremely efficient and and it really is more in line with the way that our brains are wired so um, all right so then uh, we have just a few more we have like a section cut we could do and so you kind of imagine uh, how all this stuff starts to come together. I use that um, shift nudge quite a bit. And I'll just stretch that over there. And you begin coordinating. Again, uh, another maybe small limitation is that coordinating between your section cuts and your page numbers, it's just not there. It's all manual, so you've got to be pretty diligent about uh, keeping your set in order. But um, overall, this has been used for several different project types and let me take just a moment to kind of walk you through some of those. Okay, so here's one project. This is a, uh, a loft type project in St. Louis. So here you can see there's a bunch of notes and these are just our uh, layout text. And then as I go through here, more notes. And then we get into our schedules and you can see that these schedules are text boxes. So it's very easy to uh, edit your schedule and you can change the look by messing with the shape style and we'll go and make our text color um, our text color can be black so you can see how you can adjust all that stuff very easily we'll undo that 
And as I keep going through here, we have a building plan, we have a deconstruction plan or a demolition plan. And you can see this is, uh, of course, a remodel project. So you have your existing conditions. Uh, a lot of techniques for measuring existing conditions are included in the book. And then basically you take that existing conditions model, explode it in layout. That's OK because it's not going to change. And then you assign a dash to it. And then you lay on your proposed conditions on top. And so what that does is it, it just covers up anything that is not to be demolished. So that's how we create a demolition plan. Again, completely explained in, in the book in a much simpler way. And you can see here we just need to insert something. Here's our site plan. Another uh, building plan uh, dimensioning our demising walls. And you can imagine that we had a conceptual layer called demising because we wanted to be able to pull that apart. And then uh, as we go through here, we had another, uh, oh, let's see, here's some, some details. And then here's our unit plan. So then, as you can imagine, there's another conceptual layer called uh, interior walls or our unit walls. So we have our demising is dark. Our um, unit walls are lighter than that. So that way we had our full uh, array of hatching. And as we go through here, we even have our reflected ceiling plans. So the technique on that is you don't need to create another model. You just want to slice your, your, your same model just like a plan except you're looking up. And then once it's in layout, you can right click and choose uh, flip left to right. So you can flip your plan in layout so that way you don't have to make another SketchUp model and mirror everything and, and worry about updating all that. Uh, so we've got a bunch of different unit plans. You can see our key plan down here is just um, layout geometry. It's, uh, there's like a fill here. And I took a plan and just exploded it as a vector and then created that graphic. And as we keep moving through, a larger unit plan. And towards the end here, we have all of our schedules. We have uh, more schedules, window and door types, a couple wall type uh, details, and also even some scan details. So this set, uh, definitely some more scan details here. Sometimes you just got to get it out the door and you don't want to draft all this. And uh, in this case, that's what we did is scan in our, our other details. And then some elevations. So um, this project is also going to be available at sketchupexchange.com in the pro forum. And then one last project to just show you how massive uh, this uh, project can be. Uh, if I zoom in on this, this sheet is three feet by four feet. And you can see all of our notes and all of our our details here and um, so uh, that's a pretty large project and again you can see this is one-sixth of the building and as I bounce through here um, we, we did use uh, we put all of our our schedules and our uh, door types on each page because it became so cumbersome to flip through and uh, we actually used in layout again the the power of uh, a shared layer so we put our schedules on a shared layer that way we had the same sheet layout and they showed up on every sheet and if something changed it changed on every sheet so there's some connectivity and then uh, we have enlarged restroom plans and um, you can imagine that we just took uh, a viewport and adjusted the scale of that viewport I'll unlock it select this and you can see that this viewport is set to quarter inch and um, so it's very easy to create your uh, different plans and all the different drawings you need and still maintain that dynamic link. So uh, if you made it to the end, thank you so much for watching. And definitely check out uh, SketchupExchange.com to download these, these files and mess around with them and join in on the discussions in the forum. And uh, hopefully we'll see you at a live training event in your city or give me a shout anytime and we can set up a private training or even online training. Uh, and definitely grab the SketchUp Workflow for Architecture, my new book. Uh, that definitely lays out not only a, a ton of time-saving tasks uh, where you can leverage SketchUp Pro and layout throughout every phase of the design process, but it also explains um, front-to-back layout and how to create construction documents.